what's up? Welcome back to Amazing Animals, Inc. If this is your first time, you've never seen us before, please make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click that bell, get notifications when we post up new content. Today, um, we're gonna show you guys some of our newest rescues. Uh, I think they're all pretty much reptiles. Yeah. So it's gonna be a big reptile update. We were filming our last vlog and we showed you guys Summer, our new uh, alpaca, and we realized we haven't really shown you guys a lot of the smaller rescues that we've taken in over the last two or three months. Yeah, we, uh, we started as a reptile rescue. I know you guys love seeing the reptile updates. So we have taken in quite a few new reptiles recently. Just getting a lot of calls for them. But Summer is doing so good yeah, in her barn. Yeah, she, she loves bamboo and yes. she loves water. Yeah, oh, she loves getting hosed down. She's so funny. I usually will um, fill up uh, the mud pit for the pigs and the emu. They love getting hosed down. And Summer, the first time I turned on the hose, she runs out here and just likes to drink right from the hose, just that fresh hose water. So she's so cute. Yeah, Doing sorry, good. somebody wants head rubs down yeah, here. I'm um, getting licked by goats. I'm like having to head rub. I'm multitasking here. All right, so here we go. We're gonna show you guys all of our new reptiles. So our Florida Fish and Wildlife officer called us a couple weeks ago and asked if I wanted some Diamondback Terrapins. And Terrapins are some of my most favorite turtle species. Now a Terrapin is not a tortoise and it's not a turtle. They're um, a little different. And uh, the main difference is these guys actually live in brackish water. They have a really cool gland, I think, in their eyes that they can actually secrete the salt. So when they drink salt water, they secrete the salt and just keep in the fresh water. So terrapins are really cool. And by the IUCN, they are actually threatened species and they're vulnerable. And that is because of all of the habitat loss and destruction from pollution and development along the coastlines in the Southeastern United States. And these are such cute little guys. Someone actually, um, the state of Florida has a limit. Each person is only allowed to have two terrapins. Somebody had two adult terrapins as pets and they bred and made babies. And um, technically in Florida, you're supposed to destroy the eggs. You're not allowed to have the babies. Well, somebody actually hatched them and gave them to a zoo. The zoo called the Florida Fish and Wildlife um, and they're not 100% sure if these are uh, species are pure species so they were gonna think about releasing them into the wild but they couldn't actually um, identify one of the terrapins they thought it was a crossbreed so uh, these guys will crossbreed and um, they wouldn't release them because they didn't want to put not genetically pure animals back into the wild so these are diamondback terrapins or a cross of terrapins we don't really know they're cute little guys and we are starting to bring them to our school programs and they're part of our florida native show to teach kids about turtles tortoises and terrapins that are different and they're awesome and they're so cute and we love them Okay, so we also got in for leopard geckos. Now these are ones I'm more comfortable handling. Uh, and these leopard geckos, they're actually native to Asia and the Middle East. And they are very common in the pet trade. They're awesome little guys. This is full grown, really pretty colors, kind of a unique skin feel to them as well. Um, and these came to us from a friend that had these four and they just weren't spending enough time with them, they felt. So they asked if we could take them in and we decided to make them Brian's office geckos. So they get lots of attention. Brian's in here all the time working, answering all your phone calls and emails. And so he's got some uh, geckos hanging out in the office as well. And they eat lots of mealworms. They love their mealworms. We make sure they get some calcium. We've got some heat in here. So they have a nice little setup. And uh, they are a little bit shy still, but you can tell just hanging out with me, really laid back animals. So we're very happy to add the leopard geckos to us. And we might even start using these guys for our programs as well. They're kind of cool. Their tail is actually a type of tail on a lizard that can fall off and regenerate. So we're always very careful handling them too. You don't want to scare them because their tail can actually fall off. And uh, they do regrow it, but we don't want their tail to actually fall off. They do that as a defense mechanism. If something's chasing them, they feel scared, they'll drop that tail, it'll flop around. So whatever's chasing them will hopefully check that out and it gives the gecko enough time to run away and hide again. So we're always careful handling them. You never want to grab them by the tail. You don't want to scare them, uh, but they're doing really great. They're so cute. Very pretty little, little geckos. All right, so this is a rescue case that we took in. Somebody called us 
It was good of them to uh, relinquish the snake to us. They were extremely intimidated by him. Um, he is a bit of an aggressive boa constrictor. Uh, he is super skinny, so he's really hungry. Um, unfortunately, the people were very intimidated by him. He got really big and um, they were afraid to feed him. And uh, he was starting to only eat live and they were saying where they were at, they couldn't get live. We've got him on frozen thawed rats here at Amazing Animals. Um, that's pretty much all we feed out. And he's eating, he's pounding like two or three rats a week right now to put some weight on him. Uh, he is a super beautiful snake. Once you get him out of his exhibit, he's super nice. Uh, he does kind of strike at you and he gets you every now and then if you get a little too close right when you're getting him out of his exhibit. But he's almost like, you know, six, seven foot tall, seven foot long. So that's a really big snake. That's a big commitment for a lot of people. And uh, he is just absolutely beautiful. We love him. He's gonna do awesome. But um, unfortunately, you know, people just get really scared of them and nervous uh, when they get bit by their pet. It's not fun to get bit by a snake. And if you're not used to it, uh, it can be very intimidating and then you don't wanna keep him anymore. And that I think is what happened to this guy. All right, so Brian has the boa behind us. He told me to grab the snake. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little intimidated by him. He's just really hungry. He is more strikey. And of course, right when we opened the glass, he did strike, uh, but it's not the snake's fault. That's what snakes do. He's hungry, he's wondering if we have food. And like uh, Brian said, we've been feeding him a lot, but I always make Brian handle all the new reptiles because I'm not very good reading reptile behavior. I like my cats, I'm really good at reading their behavior, but reptiles just, they're a little bit uh, different for me. And Brian's really, really good with handling them and reading them and uh, being really comfortable about around them. So I always make him do this <laughs> when we get new reptiles. She makes me get bit. <laughs> yes, he's the one who gets bit because I know I'm nervous. I know I'm gonna flinch around him and I uh, can admit that and know that I like my furry animals, which is fine. I love the reptiles, but I just make him handle them and get them comfortable. And so I can see him doing this and that makes me more more comfortable reading their behavior, seeing how they are with him, and then that makes me more comfortable once I'm learning the snake as well. So he always does this when we get our first <laughs> snakes. Brian tried to tell me to grab this one, and I was like, no, no, you're, this is all you. So he's going to be doing all these reptile updates for everybody, and I'll be the camera person. You're not going to grab the next snake? Nope, that's all you too. <laughs> all right, so if I am going to get bit, it's going to be right now because this is a truly wild snake. Um, this snake has an incredible story. Uh, somebody from Chicago caught this snake in the wild and shipped it to her ex-husband's new girlfriend's house here in Florida. When this lady opened this box, this wild snake popped out and it is not a native snake to us here in Florida. Our Florida Fish and Wildlife got involved. Um, they actually held the snake for about six months. They did an investigation. The lady was intimidated by the ex-wife who shipped the snake. Um, I guess I would be too, a little scared of that person. And she didn't want to press any charges. So it's unfortunate this lady put this poor wild snake in a box and shipped it all the way to Florida. And it's incredible that it survived, it lived. Um, and that is super not smart. It's super illegal. So please be nice to wildlife. But um, we are working with this snake. I am doing my best to tame her down. Um, I do want to hopefully use her for programs one day because she does have such an incredible story. But um, she's a little feisty and uh, corn snakes are very territorial. They're very defensive. They need to be. They're not the largest snakes in the world. So uh, they kind of have that Chihuahua, Napoleon, big attitude. So um, I am going to use my little snake hook until I get her out. Um, but I will probably get bit. So. <laughs> Screaming at me already. Come here, little girl. Get you out of here. There we go. There we go. All right, so put this snake hook down, kind of keep my face away from her. So this is a black rat snake, and this is full grown. This is a big female, and this is as big as she gets. She's rattling her tail. She's hissing at me. She wants to eat me, as you can see. Um, she is open mouth. She is not afraid of me at all. And um, these guys are extremely uh, cool snakes. She just bit me there one time. Not a big bite, just a little guy. Oh, she's coming to you, Kylie. Here she comes. Good, you focus on her. Um, so unfortunately, 
you know, this guy can't be released in the wild here in Florida. They're not native to us here in Florida. Uh, she would probably survive okay, but that's not responsible. Um, and these guys have a lot of defense mechanisms. They're gonna, they're gonna rattle their tail. Just don't, come, don't bite me on the face, please. Uh, they're gonna rattle their tail a lot, and they pee and poop, and they, uh, they smells really bad when they pee and poop on you. <laughs> and Kylie's waiting. She's smiling and laughing because she wants me to get bit. Um, where are you going? Who are you, who are you striking at? Um, so they'll actually uh, pee on you, that really nasty smell. Most predators will be like, oh, yuck, that's nasty, and let go of them, and they can run off and survive. And these guys are super important for rodent control. They're going to eat a ton of rats and mice and take care of a lot of rodent problems. So if you have a snake in your yard, uh, please don't kill it. They're super important for the environment. And uh, these guys are harmless. All snakes, even venomous snakes. They don't want to come after you. They don't want to bite you. They don't want to attack you. They literally just want to eat and survive. So leave them alone. Don't kill them. They're super cool to have in your backyard. But also don't pick them up because if you pick up a little corn snake like this, you're going to get must on and you're going to get bit more than likely. But as you can see, the longer that I have her out, she calms way down. Um, I do use the snake hook because it's not that I'm afraid of getting bit. Um, it's because I don't want her to get her uh, teeth stuck in me. Um, that her, she's more apt to bite when she's inside of her habitat, kind of protecting her house. So I'd rather get the snake hook, not have her bite me, because then she could actually break off fangs, she could hurt her teeth, and that could um, injure her from wanting to eat food, and because her mouth is sore. So I don't want her to hurt her teeth, so that's why I use the snake hook to get her out of the house. And once she's out, generally she's going to be up here, she's coming at me right now, and hopefully she won't bite me. But um, we don't want her to hurt her teeth. That's why I use the snake hook. So absolutely love her. She's a super cool snake. She's not taking her eye off me. Every time I turn her around here, she's like coming closer and closer to me and staring at my face. But um, adult black rat snake from the uh, Midwest, Northeastern, not from here in the Southeastern United States. All right, guys, thank you guys for joining us today. We really enjoyed showing you our new reptiles that we've taken in. Um, like I said, we started out our nonprofit as a little tiny reptile rescue and um, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication and a lot of animals needing homes uh, kind of uh, led us down the path that we're living today. You smell. <laughs> Uh, she must all over me. I have, I have snake musk all over me, so it's awesome. If you guys could smell this, he did say that's one of their defenses is to musk on you. And whoo, you, you're going to need a shower after this. But, you know, it's great to be here to be able to take these animals in. They need a home. They need to be cared for. Um, Brian, I give him credit. He's really, really great with the reptiles. They can be intimidating. I'll be the first to admit it. But I love them. I love seeing snakes in the backyard. I love seeing the reptiles around us. We know they're so important. And we love to teach people not to be so afraid of them, not to hurt them. You don't have to love them, but just don't hurt, hurt yeah. any of the wildlife here. Snakes are friends, not foes. Sh shovels. Don't kill them with shovels. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Be nice. Be kind. As always, go out there. Do something amazing. <laughs>